Hey everyone, Spicy Toes Gaming here. I hope you're having a great day and I hope this video can make it a little bit better. Today we're going to be trying out a brand new relic build for Prower King and we will be testing that out against Lissandra. We might immediately just lose because I'm not really sure how this build will work against Lissandra, but I think it should be a pretty solid build overall. So what the build is, Spirit of the Buru, so this is a power. Allies that cost one or less have Overwhelm, Quick Attack, and Fury. This is going to be very good for all of our Horos and really good into our star powers, which we'll touch on in a little bit. Then we're going for the Beast Within. Again, a power. All three of these relics are actually have that power effect so that these are all active throughout the entire game, even without the Poro King being on the board. So this one, allies have Overwhelm. If they have a subtype, 1-1. One, one. So all of our units, even if they are not one cost or less, are going to have that Overwhelm. So that's really good. But then the main reason we're using this is if they have a subtype 1-1. One, one. We are a Poro focused deck, so pretty much all of the units, at least all the ones we care about, are going to have a subtype, so they're all going to be a little bit stronger right at the beginning. And then last up, we're using Nora's Portal, Portal Accelerator. So this first part won't apply to us because this isn't Nora, but when you summon a created ally, grant it impact. We're going to be summoning a lot of created Poros, so we're giving those all an extra keyword, which should be a very powerful effect for our star powers. But also that impact is just helping us put more damage on the enemy nexus. Now for star powers, round start if allies have four or more unique keywords, grant it 2-2. We're going to be able to hit this very easily with all of our different relics. So pretty much every round we're just granting our whole board 2-2 as far as stats, which is very good. Then we have the plus one starting mana. Round end if an ally died this round, grant your weakest ally 1-1 one, one, and a random keywords that allies don't have. So if we have units die, we get some more keywords just to make sure we're getting our board wide scaling and going off. Now, if you appreciate this daily Path of Champions content, definitely like and subscribe. And if you want even more content, check the description down below for some links that you might also enjoy. All right, let's get into it. All right, support champion. Rumble would be decent because these all would have. Oh, I guess they don't all have subtypes. Interesting. Don't know why this one doesn't have like a Yordle subtype. Maybe Rumble won't be quite as good for us as we thought. This isn't bad. So we can make them discard with both of these. Clister, we might have units dying. Sure, let's go ahead and go here. All right, so game starts summon a green glade lookout. I think we'll go for hold it. I think this will be better for us because there's going to be some pretty crazy units and this could really help us out with that no it's that'd be a four cost we're never really gonna want to play heart of the fluff it I don't think we don't really want all of our stats on one unit that can then be just like entombed by the enemy I think let's go ahead and do a reroll here. All right, this having double attack, pretty good. This will have overwhelm, has that subtype. Yeah, that seems pretty solid. Let's try one more. Uh, we don't actually really care about our champions that much. Elusive is pretty solid, but also making more Poro stories would be really good as well. I think let's go here. This way we can keep playing this. We're going to shuffle more in our deck. That way if games go a little long, uh, we can try to mill the opponent if needed. But also we want to create more random Poros. That way we get them that impact. Uh, so I think let's go here. I think let's use one last reroll here. See if we get something really good. Pick an ally, grant it, and all other sub all other allies that share a subtype with it, 1-1. One, one. So we could play this and it could just buff up all of our poros with one one at least all that are on the board and then make another poro that seems pretty good yeah i think we can at least get one of those because we'll have it at the start of the game i think that'll be fine all right let's see so we have she who wanders that would probably be pretty tough for us potentially these other two i think draclorn would probably be easier for us i'm also not sure if we've ever gone down the middle before so let's try to go for the middles. We have Rhyme Tush Shaman with I Am Inevitable. All right, we can get rid of two of these Black Spears. I think we can hold on to the other two. One nice thing with this build is we don't really care about our champions at all. It 
if we play them great but it doesn't really matter all right let's just build out our board want to play all of these boros well that's a little sad but that's just going to give us another keyword we want to have as many units as possible all getting that stacking buff all right so we could do some decent damage yeah they probably have some more slow stuns let's just try to Oh, I guess this is the only one that has the challenger. Yeah, I guess let's just attack like this. Uh, we'll probably just play Poro Nip and kill that. Although, let's just build out our board a little bit more right now. That's probably fine. So we're ready to use our Poro Nips if we need to. We want to play our Professor, but we don't necessarily want to do that before they attack. All right, I don't know if there's a way that we can get this unit any stats. Probably not. It has Fury, but this first unit is just going to kill anything with the Poro Nip. Still, we should probably play both of these to kill their units, just so that they can't attack. We need to do that before all of our units get Frostbitten. Well, did not expect them to just drop an horn suddenly. All right, let's go ahead and drop the professor. Yeah, all these frostbites are going to make things very slow. Perhaps we should pause for that. So we'll only summon one unit, but it'll probably be pretty big. Sad, I thought I'd get frostbitten and then I'd get all those stats. Look what I do. Little disappointing, but we can attack like this, kill their one unit that's gotten pretty big, and then we're fine if the other one gets killed as well. I guess the professors really don't help very much when everything just gets immediately frostbitten. All right, so we'll block with this one right here. It has the most amount of health. We want to keep our health up as high as possible. <laughs> Good. Yes. just immediately attack and should be able to end the game. GG. Alright, four snacks, that's not too bad.
Uh, Black Spear, Lonely Poro. I think we'll go for the Lonely Poro, because this is going to create another Poro. And then the Shadow Totem, having Unit die to give us more keywords. I think this will just be the best in general. Alright, so Trapper, they're going to be constantly capturing our units. Or Angry Yetis, which will be pretty tough. They'll be scaling. It'll be, I think, interesting to go against the Yeti Yearling, because we'll have us scaling against their scaling. Uh, let's go ahead and try it out, see what we can do here. All right, let's get rid of Klista as well as the Poro King. Border from here. I feel like we're playing a very similar type of deck against each other, so this should be pretty interesting. I don't necessarily think we want to attack. I think, yeah, let's just keep letting our board scale up a little bit. See if we start or killing them, they're just going to scale up even faster. Alright, so we could use poor nip. Sure, we can go for poor stories. Alright, that's fine. Since all of our units have that vulnerable, they'll always be able to take the best possible trades. But I think we still came out ahead there. Alright, we could play Poro King. I more just want to play a bunch of Poros, though. Oh, it's a little sad. Alright, so we'll just attack with these. Probably use a Poro Nip here. Alright, so yeah, these last two are both going to struggle. feel like we could attack like this and then use the Poronip to kill this one. That way we don't have him buffing up all the rest of these. We don't want him with that regen to be able to get that health back. Still not too bad. Uh, sure, we can drop the Poro King now. So we can play a bunch of Poro Snacks next round and potentially just end the game. So, they are probably going to, yeah, be able to kill a lot of our units. I think we'll wait to play some of our poor snacks until after they try to block, because these are all bursts, so we can be pretty re re reactive with them. Alright, let's frostbite this one. 
And yeah, these all have quick attack, so they're all going to be fine. Let's go ahead and play this. And then another four snacks. GG. Oros beat Yetis. We're doing all right so far, but I do think the uh, Lissandra is probably going to be just way too fast for us. Let's see. What power does she have? I am an inevitable. Okay, we lose pretty much. I don't think we're going to be able to survive that. Uh, Colossus. So forge together. Round start at the foe. Draws equipment. It costs two less this round. At last they awaken. Plus one starting mana. If they get 10 mana, they summon a zero cost watcher. Let's get rid of all three of these. I will tell you of Orn. Oh, Professor. Like Not too bad. Always Tell me a story about Orn herself. Once long ago, he stoked the fire beneath the mountain. Alright, so we could attack. That will be able to really block and kill any of our units. I think I just want to get a little bit more scaling going. good and they didn't even want to attack wonderful all right let's just attack like this let's frost like this one almost enough to end the game Alright, I think we'll just pass. We don't really want to get rid of any of these units. We'll just let them keep scaling up, even if that means we're going to end up, well, obliterating some of the extra cards we draw. Alright, again, we'll wait for them to, well, we were going to wait for them to attack. Alright, GG. So another discard, four cost, give two allies in hand, two, two. This would be actually pretty crazy because we'd be draining five from a unit and healing our Nexus six. I think we'll go here. Uh, we don't necessarily want more units because like you saw in that last match, sometimes we're going to have a full board. We don't actually want to replace any. So having some spells to play, even if they're a little bit more pricey, could be okay. And this would just give us a whole bunch of sustain, so that'd be really good. All right, let's go for power. Evolution, perfect. This is pretty much the best, if not one of the best things we could get. It's gonna let our units have so many more stats. There's a little bit more of a chance against Lissandra now. All right, Draclorn Inquisitor. The end approaches when they summon a landmark with countdown, advance it four rounds, and secrets hidden by frost. They're going to keep frostbiting us and summoning units for free. All right, we'll get rid of this because we know we're going to draw it. And honestly, we can get rid of all three of these. We want some of our poros. Goodness. A 6-6 six, six, round one. That is pretty awesome. All 
All right, so yeah, these will all have 5-5. Five, five. We could save that for the attack. And yeah, we will probably do that. This card's kind of useless. But sure. It'll potentially get buffed up when we drop the Haunted Relic. This is slow, though, so they potentially will be able to counter us. Guess not. All right, let's just attack, and... We only have one Pora at the moment, so I think we'll save this. All right, bit annoying. But that is some good damage. I think we'll play the younger and actually just go for the manifest. We just need to build out our board a bit more. And this one has a mouth full of big jagged teeth and smashed fists. Because very soon they're gonna have a very good board. <laughs> Alright. Again, not really that big of a deal. Guess we'll play Poro King. Your Majesty. Alright, let's just open attack before they can really play anything. Oh, uh, we already are killing them. We'll save this just in case we need it. Alright, well, GG. It's funny how much brain, uh, brain worm we're getting. This is burst. I think we actually will get this. Uh, this can be a good way to save one of our units just in case the enemy is trying to like entomb it. We can play this on it. So the shackles isn't really that big of a deal. And yeah, we're not really gonna play, going to play Black Spear very often. Mechanized Mimic, Mind Meld. Oof, I kind of forget what this one has. I thought it had one with a lot of keywords, but I'm not sure. I think we'll go here, be able to cut a couple cards. Wow, it gives us all cards we do not want to cut. That really is not good. Uh, yeah, we can get rid of actually the Catamobile first. Again, three units we do not want to cut, or three cards. Well, that is unfortunate. We had very bad luck there. All right, Snowy Razor Claw. All units are vulnerable. The foe's units have four power and quick attack. That quick attack, that's gonna be very rough because normally we're at least able to trade back and then all things grow cold, double the stats and grant fearsome to the first unit the foe plays each round. That will be very bad. Uh, yeah, we can hold on to this. We'll really need to try to kill the enemy units as soon as possible. The good thing is, they also have. Um, I guess let's get rid of this one. They also have vulnerable, so at least there's that. Alright, we have Poro Nip. We might need to use that next round. We'll see. Leave your bags at the door. And let's take this outside. Yep, let's try to just let our units survive. We'll go ahead and kill this one just because one damage. We're not ending the game anyways. Come on in. Patience, cautious, and quiet. This is our way.
All right, then buffing up the stunned unit. Sounds about right. Uh, we'll wait to see what they want to do. Two-headed wolf haunts. Uh, sure. We can get rid of that, and then this one's not strong enough to kill anything. All right. Perfectly fine with us. All right, GG. Uh, Giant's Belt, Exhaust. I think we'll just get more of the units we already have. Uh, I am Inevitable again. I think Trundle's normally pretty easy though. Yeah, this also has I am Inevitable. So let's go up here. Black Lever is pretty crazy. Sure, let's pick that up. I think Spirit Stone's okay, and then I think getting some of these colorful snacks would be pretty good, especially with that Hero's Horn. That's kind of a perfect pairing. And yeah, I think we could even buy that item as well. And sure, we can get some more of these in our deck. That's all right. This one is okay, but I think I'm fine with what we have. All right. Trundle, and I am inevitable. All right, let's get rid of Black Spear. And sure, Black Shield as well. That's a pretty solid unit right there. I guess we'll play some Haunted Relics. Since we don't have any Poros at the moment. Alright, quite a solid amount of damage. Ah, uh, that's... That's sad, but not that unexpected. Yeah, not having the best luck with the fact we haven't had any horrors yet. Um, yeah, I think we can just drop Callista here. Oh, they don't want to attack. Perfect for us. I think once again, let's do Haunted Relic first. Well, if we didn't have such a crazy board, that would probably be a little bit deadly. Very risky indeed. All right, let's just attack like this. Do we want to use Poro Nip or... So that would be able to survive. Callista would still die. Right, we'll get rid of this unit. And potentially end the game. Well, GG. Well, it's been a pretty smooth and easy run up to uh, Alessandra. Aurora Porealis. I think I'd rather just get more Poro stories, to be honest. Uh, champion item chest. We can give Poro King Scout, although again, we don't really care about these that much. All right, Lissandra with I Am Inevitable. So we have really strong units and some really good damage, but... I don't think it's going to compare to how much Lissandra can scale up her units with her triple 
ice shards, and I am inevitable. Ages past, yet I remain. So I'm not particularly um, thrilled about our chances, but we'll give it our best shot. Now she's going to get a Ice Shard every single round. Alright, this one will potentially... Well, both of the... Actually, no, this one can survive. Ah, uh, they'll both survive, actually. Because they have nine, this is tough. But they'll survive barely. Oh, no. Right, we have I Am Inevitable. So after they get hit they then get stronger. Alright, so we're going to play this to have all the blockers. They're going to die at the end of the round anyway, so it doesn't really matter that... So we could barely survive, and that would give us a lot of... Yeah, let's... Oh, right. Genius. Uh, well, that's not going to help. If we had it locked in first, it would have been fine. So we could just play our Poro, but that would kind of fill up our hand too much. Alright, I feel like attacking is not really a point. Alright, we can go ahead and play this. And then they're going to play the Ice Shard and buff up their board to obscene levels, and we will die. Yep. Not at all surprised, but let's go ahead and try again. I think we could probably e win fairly easily if she had any of the other powers. If she didn't have I'm Inevitable here, I think we would, yeah, have this without too much difficulty. A dark cloud but we don't really have anything to counter what she's trying to do, so... We'll just do the best that we can. All right. 
think we'll just keep trying to play some Boros. Let's see. Let's give this one black shield. It can't block anyways. But yeah, giving our entire board that epic item. I mean, if they're willing to end the round, that's like, they could just attack and buff everything up. I guess we'll be fine with that. Yeah, I think we'll just attack with the elusives. All right, so that is going to buff up their whole board. Feel the power of true ice. Yeah, luckily most of our units have tops, so they're not getting too hurt by that. Sure, let's go ahead and try to kill their Lissandra. I mean, they'll just play another one right away, but at least we'll reset her um, stacks. Okay. Granted, who knows if we'll, we probably won't survive this attack, but at least we get her off the board. All right, so we could kill that and get a good amount of health from it. They're still gonna have a lot of units, but... Yeah, let's, let's get that one off the board at least. So... We could block. But if we block, they are able to have action again, which means they could use their Ice Shard. And then these are all going to get buffed up, each one, two, two, three times. So they're going to get a ton of extra damage, and then our units are going to die. I think I'll just not block. That way they can't cast any spells, so they can't buff up their units, at least not while they're attacking. Perfect. Right, I don't really want to give them the opportunity to play anything. So let's play a Poro Stories. Let's play a Poro Snacks. And just try to do as much damage as we can. That being said, most of their units will be fine. Yeah, I think we should still just try to go for it. Hmm. 
I'm a little worried about overdrawing, but... Alright, so there's the Watcher. Will Frostbite it just in case? That means they won't attack. Yeah, we'll try to frostbite it. Maybe that can help us. All right, we'll just pass. The good thing is they don't have their Ice Shard, so they at least haven't had one generated. So we'll potentially be fine. I think we'll just not bother. Well, I guess we'll get... Uh, it's so much stats to get rid of and reset. Yeah, we'll just leave it. We're just going to open attack and maybe be able to end the game. All right, GG. All right, got pretty lucky there. Uh, Lissandra did a pretty big misplay when we were about to kill her. She got rid of her extra copy of Lissandra. Uh, she used the champion spell and they never drew another one. So without getting those triple ice shards, the I'm inevitable wasn't as bad that second run. So luckily we were able to come away with the win. I think this is a pretty great build for Poro King, all these just passive relics buffing up all your units and really helping you do a lot of damage to the enemy nexus. Also, we got very lucky with getting evolution. I don't think we would have had a chance without that because that just gave all of our units like 6-6 six, six as far as extra stats, if not more, based on how much our units were able to get. So definitely got lucky, but I feel like you do have to just get lucky in order to beat Lissandra. A lot of luck and a little bit of skill. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, definitely like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.